making a, a real, real risky move wearing this kind of red lipstick. <laughs> I feel like I gotta like check my teeth every two seconds. But this one's a good one we're gonna talk about. It's from the drugstore. Today, we are gonna just chat about some makeup I've tried over the past couple months and give you my more finalized reviews on them. A lot of these were ones you saw me try for the first time on video. So I didn't really, like when I'm trying it, it's not always easy to know how I will like it after trying it more than once. So that's what these videos are for. I've been doing these every month-ish, maybe every other month. For a while now, if you wanna check out my playlist, I will link it. Let's dive in. Good job, Jess. Not too long of an intro this time. So a primer I have really grown to like a lot is from Milani. It's their No Pore Zone Mattifying Primer. I just said primer because I was looking at the word. It says lily and bamboo extracts and then I thought of the B and then said primer. Anyway, <laughs> this is pretty good and I'm not even a big pore filling primer person. Like I don't feel like I need to wear it every day. But I, there are some that I like and I reach for from time to time when I just feel like my makeup's been sitting weird or my skin is acting a little funky. This is one of the better ones I've tried. I mentioned it in a dupes video recently. It is a dupe for a high-end one. But I just really, really like this product and this is one that I more recently tried. So wanted to mention it here. I just feel like it actually fills in your pores just enough, but it's still hydrating. If you're someone that has normal to dry skin, it can be kind of hard to find primers like this that don't make your skin just look really dry like yes it might fill your pores but it also like makes everything look dry and cakey this doesn't do that it really is a good mix so really enjoying it it apparently is the same as their prime shield pore filling one but now it's this is what it looks like and this is what it's called but it, it even says it's the new look but the same great formula <laughs> so there you go really really like it it's one i would look out for i have noticed across is Milani sold at Target? I have, uh, okay, a couple things to chat about here. First of all, Ulta's now being sold at Target. Have we not talked about this here on my channel? That's crazy. <laughs> that really is crazy. So that's exciting. But what is exciting, so a little behind the scenes info here, when I am making the links in my description box for products, as you guys know, and I try to make clear as often as possible, I do make a commission if you buy any products like after clicking those links. It supports my channel, it supports me, so thank you if you use them. If you don't, no big deal. Shop however you want online. <laughs> but my point here is, as I'm making those links, what I have to do is go to the actual product page and then I like create the link there. But what's crazy is, for the longest time, I would grapple with, you know, do I want to link it from Ulta where it might be a couple dollars more expensive than, than it is at like Target or than it is, but now that a lot of Ulta products are being sold at Target too, it's kind of nice because I can link a lot of things to Target and I know like for me, I am more willing to check out at Target online because I have my red card, like debit card. So I'm already getting like 5% cash back. I'm getting free shipping. So I'm so much more apt to order makeup from Target than I am from Ulta, especially like if I'm just like mobile, like adding something. Anyway, why did I get into that? Oh, just that it's so exciting that now when I'm linking like drugstore products, but also some high-end products, I can just link them to Target. And for a lot of you guys, I know it's easier to shop there. I know that's not true for everyone, but that's all. I think that's awesome. And I think that was a really smart move on Ulta's part. It reminds me of like Sephora being connected to JCPenney. Is that still going on? Is that relationship still? <laughs> I don't know, but you know, I just feel like Ulta and Target, that was a freaking smart move. Move. Anyway, smart move on both of their parts, I think. Okay, wow, we've only gotten through one product. Another product that I can't believe I'm getting rid of because it's so new to me, but I just think the original's better. This is the MAC Face and Body Foundation, but this is their Studio Radiance. Now that I'm saying that, I want to look up if this is a just, if they're two separate products. Because the original one I have, I kept because I had the shade N1 in both of them, and I showed this like up close in my foundation declutter video, which just went up very recently. I thought maybe they were two separate products, but I don't think the MAC face and body, like the original one, which is the one I kept, is even being sold anymore. So I think this was its replacement. Crap. <laughs> I think I like the original better, so uh-oh. Maybe, I, see, now maybe I shouldn't get rid of this. This was in my declutter pile, it's sitting right there, and I pulled it out to talk about it. Maybe I'll keep, but the problem is this shade is not quite right. This N1 and the original N1 are slightly different, and this one's a little bit darker. No! <laughs> the magic of the MAC face and body is, and it took me so long to come around to like liking it, is that it's really, really thin, but the more you rub it, it becomes tacky. So like if I put a little bit on my finger and rub it on my cheek, I rub it for about five or 10 seconds and it suddenly becomes tacky and it gives the most 
beautiful finish to the face. It does not look like makeup. Like this is a makeup artist's like secret for makeup that's gonna be seen up close. And I just think the original is better. So maybe I should keep it, mess with it a bit more knowing that now I can't even, like if I recommend the original, I don't even think you can buy it. Please correct me if I'm wrong. That was my minimal two minute research. So one that I recently fell in love with is the Sephora Best Skin Ever. I did a Sephora like trying a bunch from the brand video cause a bunch of it was on sale. This was the foundation so many of you guys told me to try and it is so pretty. It's so pretty. If you just need an everyday foundation, medium coverage, fuss free, looks good. I don't think you'll be disappointed by this. I really don't. It is just an all around good foundation and it's not too anything. It's not too high of coverage. It's not too matte. It's not too glowy. It's just a good standard middle of the road, but in a good way foundation. <laughs> You know what I mean? I really like it. So I have the shade, if you're near mine or just curious, I'm 11.5P and I actually think it's a really good shade match. So big fan of this. It has a pump, a nice frosted glass bottle. As I've mentioned, the price tag of this is a lot lower than like high end. Sometimes, okay, let me just say this. Before I had ever, ever, ever shopped at Sephora, I assumed everything that Sephora sold was like crazy expensive. And I do kind of still think that, but I didn't realize for a while that the Sephora brand was cheaper. Like I just didn't. Obviously I know that now and I guess I should have known it because typically store brands are cheaper, but I don't know. When I would just hear Sephora in general, I would be like, oh, expensive. But it is nice that the, the house brand is not as expensive and they do have some good stuff and this is one of their best, best products. So let's talk about this lipstick because I know you're wondering, or you're not, but I love it, okay? <laughs> I really love it. It's from CoverGirl. It's their Exhibitionist Ultra matte lipstick. Listen, I don't even tend to like lean in when I hear someone say matte lipstick. So I'm like, no, like I've moved on. I just moved on. <laughs> this stuff is so pretty. It's so pretty. And it's like weirdly moisturizing for being a, I think pretty darn matte formula. And again, it's just traditional lipstick. Um, well, kind of traditional. It's the slightly different type bullet. It's just pretty. This shade I have is 675 All A Buzz. I have another shade that's a red and it's not here. I couldn't find it. And it's more blue tone. So this is more of like an orangey yellow toned red. That one's more blue tone. I think I like that one just a little bit better, but I like a fiery red like this too. So it just kind of depends on my mood. The formula is beautiful, y'all. It's not very expensive and want to mention it. I have not tried yet other shades in this line. I've just done the two like reddish shades. I, they might even have more than two, but that's all I've kind of dipped my toe. But it, assuming I, I mean, I love both of these. So I have to assume if you went a nude route or a berry route or whatever, I really like the formula. So I feel like it stays in place. Definitely wear a lip liner with it if it's, if it's a red. The lip liner I'm wearing today is just the Sephora Rouge Gel Lip Liner. You guys know I love in It's Cherry. Totally not the right shade of red for this. This went really well with the other shade of this I have, which I can I can put in the description box. I can't think of what it's called. It still worked. I mean, it worked well enough, but it is not the right shade of red. Sephora Bronzer. This is their Sephora Bronzed Matte Bronzer. I have it in the shade number two. This is a really good bronzer, I have learned. When I first tried it, I kind of felt like it's good, but I don't know if the shade is right, and I just felt like it was just good. The more I've used it, the more I've fallen in love with it, and I think the magic is you need a brush that's gonna diffuse it a bit, especially if the shade, like, this is a very kind of more orangey bronze when it's compared to my skin tone, so it's a personal thing, but I just feel like because the formula is really nice and pigmented, if you use a more diffused brush, this is, <laughs> I mentioned this in like every video, the EcoTools Blending and Bronzing Brush, like seven bucks. You can use that to blend it all and it looks so much better than it did with like a more dense brush or anything like that. So that is the trick. I think this is a really, really nice bronzer the more I've used it. So wanted to mention it. I like the kind of sleek packaging and yeah, really good. I would be tempted to try the next shade down just out of curiosity. I don't like need to buy it right now, but maybe in the future. Do you guys hear about all the, uh, <laughs> if you're a Disney nerd like I am, all the figment, the dragon. It, figment is basically just a dragon that's a part of this ride in Epcot in Disney World in Florida. And it's funny, he's not even really like, he's not from any movie, he's not from anything like that. He's literally was just created for this ride decades ago. And it's kind of become a cult favorite, even though the ride itself, it's a personal favorite of mine, but the ride itself is not like that great. <laughs> it's really not, but it's just nostalgic now, I think, for a lot of people. But they had a popcorn bucket that was shaped like this dragon. His name is Figment. And freaking people waited like five and a half hours in line for this popcorn bucket, to buy the popcorn bucket. 
And then of course there's the drama that goes with it. Like people would buy like 20 of them and they'd be reselling them on eBay for hundreds of dollars and all that, you know. Regardless, it was just wild to me that there was that much interest in it. I think that was the craziest thing. It excited me though, only because I was, I told Tyler, I was like, hey, you know what the good news is here? I was so concerned they were gonna like close down the Figment ride and like never have it again because it is kind of old and dated. But I'm like, but it's so nostalgic and good. And I'm like, well, I don't think they're gonna be shutting it down now, now that they see that there's such a huge, ridiculous interest in this made up dragon, you know? Anyway, that's all. This cup I've had for a minute. I got from like a scavenger hunt thing you could do in Epcot and this was like the prize uh, and it's so cute. That had nothing to do <laughs> with anything. Okay, I lost about 50% of you. Sorry, we're back, we're back, we're back. So I'm gonna get rid of this one you saw in my declutter but I grabbed it to talk about it real fast. The Essence Pretty Natural hydrating foundation. Simply put, it just has more coverage than I was anticipating. It's not quite as hydrating as I was hoping. And so I don't know, I think I just had it built up in my head and you know how that goes. And also I'm not totally convinced the shade match is perfect. And I do think that plays a role in me liking a product or not. It's really hard when something is wrong for you to see it as good, especially with the foundation where you're putting it all over and you already know how hard it is to find a good shade match. Like there's plenty of foundations. I love that the shade match is just a little off, but I'm like, mm, but it's so good. This one is not good enough for me to feel like I need to keep it. But you already know this freaking foundation stole my heart in the past few months. It's from Shiseido. It's the Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting. It's one of the very few high-end foundations I've ever said is actually worth the ridiculous price tag. It actually is. It's just beautiful. I'm wearing it today. I don't wanna say it has full coverage because I really don't think it does. I think it has medium. You can build it a little above medium. So I'll usually put on like a second layer on my nose and cheeks just cause I've got more freckleage and like discoloration. This is just pretty. It's not overly radiant or dewy. Like I don't think my skin looks crazy greasy or anything like that, but I feel like it wears really well. It makes my skin look healthy and youthful and nice. Man, oh man, this one is beautiful. So had to mention that because mm, it just, every time I see that in my drawer, I'm like, oh yeah, this makes me so happy. What else? Oh, these Milani uh, blush palettes. I have gotten so many questions about these, which is so funny. I'm curious as to why there's so much interest in these. I don't know. I feel like we'd all kind of moved on collectively, right? As a group, we were like, all right, we're done with like blush palettes. <laughs> I don't know. That was just me. I will say this, when I saw them launch, I was like, oh yes, I wanna try them. So I guess I, I get it. But the powder one, really good. I think it's really pretty. I'll show you some swatches here too. I think they're like pretty pigmented. They blend easily, they stay well. So if you like the shades in the palette, go for it. I'm someone that like, I'm not gonna, this is a lot, like definitely too deep for my skin. These two are pretty, but I have so many, like I just don't feel the need to have a palette of powder blushes. But if you do really like them, I do think it's a good formula. So that, you know, there's always that caveat. I'm wearing the light peach shade and it is, I think really pretty. It can blend really nicely into a bronzer if you're near my skin tone, which I think is a really nice look. So I do like it, not planning to get rid of it right this second. The one I didn't like was the cream one and that was the one I wanted to love. That's the one I was so excited about. When you swatch it, it doesn't swatch terribly. It just doesn't apply well. It's kind of splotchy, it lifts up the makeup underneath. And I have said before, and I will say it again, I would buy the Milani Cheek Kiss Single Cream Blush. If you're wanting to try this formula, this is better. And when I've tried them side by side, it is a different formula. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> This one is better, the single. So I have it in 110 Nude Kiss. It's just a little bit easier to apply. It stays better. I don't feel like it's splotchy or like lifts up the makeup the way the palette does. So just as a little PSA there, I would go for the singles, find a shade you would use. So a win, a loss, a win. <laughs> By the way, this is not something gonna be mentioned here, but the highlighter I'm wearing, cause I think I'm wearing almost, almost everything I'm mentioning other than like, I mentioned like four foundations. So I'm obviously not wearing four foundations, but this is the highlighter I'm wearing, the Flower Beauty Day Glow Highlighting Glaze. It's really pretty. I just like tap it on with my fingers. I really like it. All right, so a product I've grown to like a little bit more is the NYX Brow Glue. This, when I first tried it, literally the description is that it's not gonna be sticky. And then when you put it on, it's so sticky. I'm like, why would they even put that if it's a sticky product? We can all deal with that, but don't put it in the like the in bold print. This is like not sticky at all, but it's absolutely sticky. Rice Krispie Treat level sticky. Anyway, 
but you know what? It keeps my brows in place. It really does. I definitely think the trick to this is it comes off with a lot of product right off the bat. So I would grab, you know, whatever you have, a washcloth, whatever, and wipe half of it off, then go in. Because today I applied it just straight up without wiping it off to this brow, which actually I do think looks good, but it was a lot. So I had to wipe a lot off. And then without re-dipping it, so with half of it off of the brush, I did the other. And I feel like it was a lot easier to work with that way. So maybe wipe a little bit off. It's not a big deal, but it definitely holds the brows in place really, really well. So wanted to mention, cause it is not expensive and I love a good clear brow gel. It's one of those few like extra steps, if you will, I'm usually willing to do because I hate, I feel like I'm changing my shirt a million times a day in life. What am I doing? But like, I feel like I'm constantly, maybe it's that I get ready a lot in my pajamas and then like I would take my shirt off. Maybe that's what it is. But I always feel like I'm constantly taking my shirt off and like my brows will be like. <laughs> so a clear brow gel prevents that and that's why I'm a big fan of it and I will go the extra step to do it. Some mascaras. I really was a fan of the Sephora Size Up Mascara. It was really pretty good. It's volumizing. I've enjoyed every single time I've used it. Curls my lashes. The brush is just a classic big old brush. I like that kind of wand and it just really volumizes. It's not what I'm wearing today, but honestly, it's what I've been wearing in like most of my recent videos. <laughs> so I really like it would totally buy again. If Sephora had like a sale again, where it was like 30% off or whatever, what, what? I think it was like 30, percent off recently, maybe 40. It was a big percentage. I would totally recommend this. If you like volumized lashes, I think you would like this. Oh, another one that has my heart is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk push-up lashes. That's what I'm wearing today. I just really like it. I do think there's kind of a learning curve, which might instantly turn some of you guys off and that's okay. Cause it is an expensive mascara. And I do think there are really, really good ones at the drugstore. You don't have to spend the money. You really don't. But I really do enjoy this. It is kind of a weird brush where part of it has got the like little spindly spindles to brush through your lashes. And then the other half is like a bare wand with a ton of product on it. So as you're kind of brushing at the base, you can turn it and get a bunch of product there if you want. Then you can turn it and brush through it. So you're brushing, you know what I mean? Once you get used to it, you have a lot of control. But like the first time or two I used it, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? You know what I mean? But I really, really like it. And of course, freaking Charlotte Tilbury nails the packaging every time. It is always so exactly right. <laughs> As I said, I am working on my updated best and worst of Charlotte Tilbury because I've tried so much. And there are some amazing products you guys know I love and there are some that I, real stinkers, the ones that I just really don't like. So that will be coming very soon. Okay, this is another one I've gotten a lot of DMs about, the Huda Beauty Glow Wish Powder Foundation. I really like it. I think people are a little split on this, at least in what the bits I've seen, but I think generally more people like it than don't. And I think the people that like it are people that like a little bit of glow, but they still want a little bit of coverage too. And that is why I like this. This reminds me of the It Cosmetics, oh boy, what's the long name? Celebration Foundation, Powder Foundation. I'm already screwing it up. But it's an illuminating power foundation. Powder, oh my gosh, I'm lost, are you lost? Anyway, that It Cosmetics one is an illuminating powder foundation. So is this, it's a luminous powder foundation. And I feel like it's got decent coverage it still gives a little bit of glow, but I don't think it's too much. A lot of times I'll dust highlighter like on my forehead a bit. I didn't today. So that is what you're seeing. That is what you're seeing. I like the way it looks. I don't think like if I'm looking really up close, it's not detectable glitter. So I don't want that to turn you off either. But if you like that look, you might really like this. I also like that I can dust it on my cheeks. And if there's any lingering like pigmentation I wanna cover, this will do that as well. So. I'm a big fan of it. I feel like this and the No Pore Zone Primer with Milani and well, of course, the Shiseido, like these three together is what I'm wearing and I just think it's so pretty. I just feel like it's like a power trio. So the concealer I'm wearing is one I wasn't a big fan of. It's from Sephora again. It's the Bright Future Gel Serum Concealer. I don't know. It just didn't do enough for me and there's just, there's just better concealer out there, y'all. I mean, that's just the reality. I didn't think it did much. I just feel like it constantly creases because it is more of a lightweight concealer. It's just not as easy to, to blend into the skin and then I feel like I'm constantly like tapping it back in. I set it with a powder today and I do think that helped a lot, but it's just, it's one that I know. I've tried it a little bit more. I just did a concealer declutter. I was gonna say, I'll probably eventually declutter. Maybe I'll declutter sooner rather than later just because 
I know how I feel about it, you know? All right, so this eyeliner is the Urban Decay 24-7 Waterline Eyeliner. You can kind of see that it a little bit got down on my waterline. A lot of people in the reviews for this said that you really do kind of have to give it a minute, like once you've applied it to whichever waterline you're wanting to put it on. I put it on my top. You kind of have to like give it a minute to kind of dry, but first of all, that involves keeping your eyes open. <laughs> I do generally think this works pretty well, but I usually at least once within the first like hour of applying it, so that would be like now, feel like one time I'll have to kind of go in and wipe it off of it. And it's not usually a lot, but it's a little bit. And then I feel like, okay, now we're good for the day. And it is good for the day. So if that doesn't bother you, and you know you like the Urban Decay formula, because this is a super black, super creamy eyeliner, then it might be worth doing. As I've mentioned a million times, the Makeup by Mario liner in the perfect brown that one specifically is super dark super creamy and it does not budge from the waterline the black one from that line does but the dark dark brown doesn't and that is just my holy grail i was kind of excited to try this thinking oh this can be similar and it is really close but it's not quite as good but it is still good like would i ever buy that again I probably would have. But the other liner I used kind of on top of it to do a little wing and stuff and to make it thicker is the Sephora Fine Line Felt Liner. I am a big fan of this and I liked it when I first tried it, but I really like it and I've reached for this a ton since trying it for the first time. I like that it's a smaller tip so you can get really detailed, especially like if you're wanting to get a little bit of liner in there. You can really get in there. I don't notice that it like kind of spreads. You know how some liners will do that, like liquid liners. And I can get a little micro wing the way I typically do it. I can go bigger if I want. It's so freaking easy <laughs> to use. And again, the price point is not crazy either. So definitely would repurchase this again when it dries out because I think just the ease of use and the formula, two thumbs up. Too Faced Cinnamon Swirl Palette. Ooh, baby. I've not bought a Too Faced palette in a while. I mean, years, y'all. And I used to love those palettes. And so I recently had the yearning to buy one. And so I went with this one and I'm so glad I did. This is what I'm wearing, obviously, for a super simple Jessica eye look. I did the shade Frost Those Buns all over the lid. And it's just such an easy, this honestly, this shadow alone can just be the look. Like it's so easy to use. Any of these shadows could be single shadow looks. But then I went in with Doughboy there, which is just a really light matte color in the crease just to kind of complete the look. The shimmers in this are just stupid. They're so creamy and buttery and pretty and easy to blend. They always catch the light so beautifully. I don't notice creasing. So yeah, big fan of this. The smell is not very strong at all and being seven months pregnant my sniffer is freaking good right now like i can smell things a mile away and this scent is very very light so if you've always been concerned because you've smelled Too Faced palettes in the past that were super strong this one really isn't i'm gonna be honest i kind of wish the scent was a little stronger because i like that like i loved that peach palette man i don't think i realized that Too Faced still made the sweet peach eyeshadow palette and now there's a part of me that wants to buy it again <laughs> It's pretty similar. I mean, it's not the same as this, but I loved the smell of that, but it's very similar color, so I don't really need it. It was out of stock on Ulta, but like on Nordstrom, they had it. Anyway, I love that palette. <laughs> Brow products that really, this one especially, really swept me off my feet. It's the Sephora Brow Volumizing Fiber Mascara, and then I also have the Sephora Clear Brow Gel. The Clear Brow Gel is great. It's not nearly as strong of a hold as like that NYX Brow Glue, but it's really easy to use. I don't feel like too much gets applied. So for an everyday clear brow gel, I do like it. But this, ooh, this. You guys know I've had a love affair with the e.l.f. Wow Brow for a minute. And that still, I think, takes the top of the cake. You know what I mean? Because it's four bucks. It's so good. I've repurchased it like three times. I freaking go through that stuff. What I personally like about it, however, is that it actually is not crazy pigmented. So even someone that does have naturally darker hair, my brows are not super dark. And so I don't want like the darkest thing in the world. So it's kind of nice that it's not crazy pigmented. It's super easy to use, right? This one has a little bit more pigmentation, the Sephora one, but I just feel like it makes my brows look so complete that it's starting to like creep its way up into the e.l.f. wow brow territory. But I would say if you are newer to these kinds of products, start with the e.l.f. one because a, it's cheaper. See if you even like it. Because for the longest time, I didn't like this kind of product. Also, I just think it's easier to use because it's not as pigmented. But this one is really, really good too. The brush is a little bit different than the e.l.f. one. So the e.l.f. one's there on the bottom and the Sephora one's at the top. Sephora one's a little bit longer, but I mean, 
it's, it's not that different. So yeah, this Sephora one, when and if I run out, I will buy again because I really do like it. I just like both. They're both really good. But I would say, like I said, if you're new to this kind of product, start with the e.l.f. one. The e.l.f. one's so good to me. That's it, you guys. That is freaking it. What a world. I learned today that MAC Face and Body, the original, I think is discontinued. And I also learned that the Too Faced Sweet Peach eyeshadow palette is still available to buy online. <laughs> Who knew? Although the fact that it's not in stock at, let me see if Too Faced itself is still selling it on their website. Okay, so it says it's out of stock on Too Faced, but it does say will ship when back in stock. So it's on back order. So it is still around and it's on back order. Maybe that means it's super popular. <laughs> I don't know. That was one of the few events I've ever gone to long ago, a Too Faced event in LA. And it was, I think that's one of two I've ever gone to. And it is just not my speed. Like, we had a blast and Tyler was able to go and it was so much fun, you guys. And I met so many lovely people. That was not the issue. But I am just so socially anxious that that kind of scenario makes me clammy. Like, ooh. So I was, I was being very brave. <laughs> but it was so much fun. Anyway, so that I think that's a part of it too. Like I have a happy uh, space in my heart for this because that was the launch they were celebrating. Okay. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you'll subscribe, stick around. We talk about a lot of makeup here. We talk about... I don't know, I like vlog about my life and being a mommy, I'm pregnant, so I've been talking a lot about that. If you are in that world right now and you wanna hear more about it, I definitely have some more pregnancy related videos coming up. I just did a pregnancy favorites video. No, pregnancy must haves, and I mean must haves. So definitely check that out. This is my second baby, so I feel like I've got a little bit more experience than I, well, certainly than I did last time. Also, I just rewatched some of my old, <laughs> pregnancy videos there a lot of them are privatized now because I watch them I'm like absolutely not Jessica you were wrong on everything <laughs> not everything but I just didn't I didn't know what I didn't know I guess that's just it but I'm, I'm planning on doing lots of new fresh videos for 2022 because those were from like freaking four or five years ago which is <laughs> insane anyway thank you guys for watching all the way to the end like I said I hope you'll subscribe come say hey to me over on my Instagram it is at it's Jessica Braun I'm always lingering over there <laughs> in my Instagram stories. So I'd love to see you over there too. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.